It seems everyone is mad at Qantas. Qantas? Qantas. Qantas is in damage control. Facing a class action lawsuit. Customers have complained of poor service in the wake of multiple scandals. The carrier was already facing court action from sacked workers and angry customers. And now Australia's consumer watchdog is alleging the company sold tickets for flights it had already cancelled. They continued to advertise for on average two weeks after, but in some cases up to 47 days after. Adding to the turmoil, Qantas CEO Alan Joyce announced he was moving up his retirement date two months ahead of schedule. It's a spectacular fall for an airline that had for decades built a reputation of excellent reliability and customer service. Where did things go wrong? Stop me if you've heard this before, but COVID. Like just about every airline, Qantas suffered huge losses throughout the pandemic. But it's the way the company weathered the storm and the bridges it burned on its way to earning record profits that's really ticked people off. First, there's the way Qantas treated its workers. In May 2021, Alan Joyce announced a two-year wage freeze as the company grappled with falling revenue. Qantas sacked nearly 10,000 workers throughout the pandemic years, including the outsourcing of 1,700 ground staff. This was at a time when the federal government supported Qantas with $2.7 billion in funding, including a claimed $900 million in JobKeeper payments. In March this year, the airline said it plans to rehire 8,500 workers, but over the course of a decade, meaning it'll be well into the 2030s before Qantas's workforce returns to anywhere near its pre-pandemic size. Qantas has also been accused of overcharging customers during the current cost of living crisis. As my colleague, transport reporter Elias Vizente reported, consumers have been paying airfares 50% above pre-pandemic levels, even as the cost of jet fuel has come down. Tony Weber, the former chief economist at Qantas, said airlines were passively and slowly adding capacity because they know they're making money. The Qantas Group is also sitting on nearly half a billion dollars worth of flight credits. And while Qantas customers are paying high airfares, Alan Joyce has been raking it in. Last financial year, his base salary was $2.27 million. But that's not all. During the pandemic, Qantas deferred millions of dollars worth of bonuses for Joyce when the airline was making losses and sacking workers. He is now due to recoup those bonuses, which could see Joyce walking away from the company with more than $20 million. On top of all of this, Qantas, Virgin and Jetstar have all been accused of slot hoarding which is the deliberate scheduling and cancellation of flights to prevent competitors from scheduling similar flights. Data has shown that nearly one in every 10 flights from Sydney to Melbourne are being cancelled. An investigation by the ACCC found that between May and July 2022, Qantas cancelled nearly one in four flights. The airlines deny their slot hoarding out of Sydney airport, blaming cancellations on bad weather and air traffic controller shortages. Except, as our transfer reporter Elias pointed out, Almost half of those cancellations in April occurred on days with no weather or air traffic controller issues. So given all of this, it's no surprise then that Qantas has become the most complained about company and one of the most distrusted brands in the country. You are the most complained company in Australia. So what can the government do? One option is to require airlines to compensate passengers for delayed and cancelled flights, which would bring us closer to EU standards of consumer protection. The US, Canada and the EU all compensate passengers for delays and cancellations. The Albanese government is preparing an aviation white paper to look at a raft of issues in the sector, including consumer protection, as well as slot hoarding and competition. But it's also made a few decisions that have drawn accusations that it's protecting Qantas at the expense of consumers. It axed an airline monitoring program at the ACCC this year, which was keeping tabs on anti-competitive behavior in the airline industry. In fact, in its last quarterly report in June, the ACCC warned a lack of competition in the domestic market was causing higher airfares and poorer service. Qantas and Jetstar make up 66% of the market and with Virgin added to the mix, together make up 94%. The government also rejected a request by Qatar Airways to fly extra services to Australia, which experts say would have added competition on international routes and helped to bring down airfares. That caused a bit of chaos in Parliament, with the coalition accusing the Albanese government of running a protection racket for Qantas, and the Greens questioning whether Labor was putting the corporate interests ahead of the public. Are you working in the interests of the Australian people? The government says it turned down the Qatari request on national interest grounds, but has been inconsistent in its messaging and will now face a Senate inquiry to explain how it arrived at its decision. What has been consistent though is the failure of Qantas to live up to consumer expectations. Its razor sharp focus on delivering profits to its executives and its shareholders has lost it the trust of the Australian public. One Labor senator who has been a fierce critic of Qantas over the years, Tony Sheldon, summed up Alan Joyce's legacy after 15 years as Qantas CEO. A workforce split across 38 companies 
and a brand now synonymous with low pay, insecure work, illegal sackings, and consumer ripoffs. If you like this video, I also write a daily newsletter called The Afternoon Update. It's a quick three minute roundup of the news that matters. You can get it by visiting our website or just by downloading the Guardian app and you'll get a notification every afternoon.